Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth week of online teaching. I hope you had a lovely weekend and managed to spend some time in the sunshine. This week we're going to learn about the proteome, so let's get started. The three learning intentions today are to understand what is meant by the proteome, to understand why the proteome is larger than the genome, and to understand that the proteome varies throughout different cell types. The proteome is defined as the entire set of proteins expressed by the genome. You will remember from higher biology that the genome of an organism is its entire hereditary information that is encoded in a molecule called DNA. A genome is made up of genes that code for proteins and other DNA sequences that don't code for proteins. So the proteome is all of the proteins made by the genetic code known as the genome. The Human Proteome Project was first launched in 2001. It is a global project, so it happens throughout the world. The main aim of the project was to map the entire human proteome. There are many benefits to knowing each and every protein, its function and its location within the human body. The first reason that this project was undertaken was to understand human biology at a cellular level. The second reason was to expand the understanding of each gene within the human body and increase our understanding of protein-based diseases. Okay, so we've looked at the first learning intention to understand what is meant by the proteome, so you need to be able to define that. Now let's look at why the proteome is larger than the genome. It is important to know that the proteome is much larger than the genome. While we do not know the exact number of genes and proteins, the genome is estimated at around 20,000 to 25,000 genes. While the proteome is anywhere between 250,000 to over a million different types of protein. This is primarily due to processes called alternative RNA splicing, which allow many different proteins to be made from the same one genetic code. You have heard of the term alternative RNA splicing already and higher. This is when different proteins can be expressed from one gene. So if you take the yellow gene here, its genetic code can make protein 1, but the same code in a different combination can make protein 2. And then if you change the sequence of the code again, this can make protein 3. If we remind ourselves of this a little further, the genetic code is firstly copied into the primary RNA transcript through a process called translation. Alternative RNA splicing removes non-coding introns and splices different combinations of exons together to create different mature mRNAs, depending on which exons are retained. So, for example, our gene here is converted into the primary RNA transcript. This can then create mature mRNA1, which has exons 1, 2 and 3, and creates protein 1. Whereas mature mRNA2 has exons 2, 4 and 5, and this creates a different protein, protein 2. And finally, mature mRNA3 has exons 1, 3 and 5, and this creates protein 3. This shows you how alternative RNA splicing can take a small section of the genome, so our wee yellow gene here, and create a large variety of proteins in the proteome. This diagram depicts the idea of a proteome being larger than the genome pretty well. So you've got the genome, it's relatively small. In this example, it's 20,000 genes. Compared to the number of protein molecules that it can produce, so in this diagram, it's saying it can produce over 1 million proteins. 
Now that we've looked at the difference in size between the genome and proteome, we can now move on to the final learning intention to understand that the proteome varies throughout different cell types. Genes can either be protein coding genes, which you may know as exons, or non coding RNA genes, also known as introns. It's important for you to understand that not all genes create proteins. Non coding RNA genes do not create proteins, but they are responsible for creating other molecules. Our non-coding RNA genes are able to create tRNA, which carries specific amino acids to the ribosome in translation. And you can see that in our diagram here. rRNA, which is one of the main components of the ribosome itself. And finally, it can create RNA molecules that control the expression of other genes. So it controls the expression of other genes to create things that are not protein. Every cell will have its own specific portfolio of proteins. This protein portfolio can change in a cell over time and it can also vary under different conditions. Factors such as the metabolic activity of the cell, if the cell goes under stress, so cellular stress, response to signaling molecules, and if a cell is diseased, can all affect the type of proteins that are being expressed at any one time within a cell. Okay, so I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Can you define what a proteome is? Okay, so well done if you got this correct. It is the entire set of proteins expressed by the genome. Again, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Why is the proteome larger than the genome? Okay, well done if you've got this correct. It is due to alternative RNA splicing. Final question. State one factor that can affect protein expression within a cell. Okay, so any one of these would be the correct answer. So time, metabolic activity of a cell, cellular stress, response to signaling molecules, and if a cell is diseased versus if it was healthy. So to recap, our three learning intentions today were to understand what is meant by the proteome, to understand why the proteome is larger than the genome, and to understand that the proteome varies throughout different cell types. Now that we have went through the PowerPoint, these are the revision tools we are advising you to use this week. The summary notes can be found in the assignment. If you look at page 27 and 28, this gives you all the information you need this week about the proteome. I've also attached scans of a revision booklet for you to read. Finally, if you type in study stack and in the search bar type synonyms HS, this will come up with loads of flashcards. Click on the Advanced Higher Proteins link to get the flashcards for the topic we've just covered. I've just added on extra flashcards to the original stack so you can study all four weeks. This week we have two assessment materials for you to complete. The first are revision questions for you to download and complete. These revision questions, there's only eight questions this week. One of them is a problem solving calculation. Have have a shot at it, I'm sure you'll be fine with it. The second is a proteome quiz on Teams. Once you've completed this, you must submit it. This will show us that you've completed the task. Please let us know if you're having any trouble accessing the documents. Thanks for listening and I hope you have a really good week.